Hey guys, and welcome to another Herp Tip Tuesday, where every Tuesday we take a look at different topics, tips, and tricks that are designed to help you and I, as a community, become better herpers and be ambassadors for reptiles and amphibians. So today we're going to be taking a look at when is the best time to go herping. when is the best time to go herping? The best time to go herping really depends on what it is that you're looking for. Different animals have different behaviors at different times of the year, have different behaviors in certain climates, have different behaviors during certain weather patterns and events, and whether it's daytime or nighttime, it really depends a lot on the species that you're looking for. When you decide to go out on a herping um, expedition, the very first thing you should do is research your target, okay? So, we're going to take a look at this from a couple of different angles. The first angle would be whether or not the target is learning the animals in a certain region, or if the target is a particular species. And having a clear target will really kind of affect the, the method in which you approach this. If we are looking at it from the standpoint of, I'm looking for a pygmy rattlesnake, okay? If I was looking for a pygmy rattlesnake, I would go to an environment that is conducive to their survival in late August, early September, on a sunny day, just as the sun is beginning to go down, okay, that would be, that would be when the best time to go herping is for me, because I'm looking for pygmy rattlesnakes. If my project was to explore the Croatan and try to get an idea of what reptiles and amphibians are in an area, then I'm going to need to mix it up. I'm going to need to do some daytime herping. I'm going to need to do some nighttime herping. I'm going to try to hit sunny days and cloudy days, dry days and rainy days, and kind of encompass a wide variety of climates because like our frogs like rainy, cool nights where our snakes become more active on hot, humid nights. But if your idea is to just get an idea of what's in an area, you really need to try to hit up all these different environments. Another part is temperature. Temperature plays a, a major factor uh, in when the best time to go herping is. A lot of times we like to go and herp on the nice warm sunny days. And you know, I can go out on a day where the temperature is 80 degrees and it works out great. And then the next day I can go out and you know, it's 80 degrees, but there's a cold front approaching and the animals sense that cold weather is on the way and they disappear. So really the temperature has a, has a huge factor. You got to remember that reptiles and amphibians are exotherms. But their temperature is affected by their environment. So when it's warm, the animals are going to be warm. And when it's cool outside, the animals are going to be cool. Humidity is a big factor that affects herping. Um, a lot of your amphibians aren't out when the humidity is really low. I know that a lot of your reptiles behavior is modified when humidity levels are really low. So humidity plays a factor. Climate factors, whether we're in flooding conditions, whether we're in normal uh, conditions for a seasonal pattern, or whether or not we're in drought conditions, it really the, the animals will modify their behavior based on those um, climate conditions, the current climate conditions. Um, another thing to point out about that is animals can also sense when climate change is on the way. So a lot of times the animals, even though the conditions at the moment seem plausible to find reptiles and amphibians, they may sense that change before the change gets here and then they disappear. Short-term weather patterns also affect how and when you're going to be successful on a trip. Certain animals respond better to absolute sunlight where other animals prefer rainy days. I know a, a good example is right here in the southeast. Your racers, your black racers, love hot sunny days. Not a cloud in the sky, blue skies, plenty of sun, plenty of heat. Black racers are everywhere. You don't find any cottonmouths. You go back a few days later on a rainy night 
and you're not going to find any black racers, but there's going to be cotton mounds all over the road. Seasonal patterns also affect reptiles and amphibians during the spring. There's a lot of mating going on. There's a lot of feeding going on. All the animals are coming out of hibernation and they're looking for food. But then as we progress into summer, then it becomes really hot. When it becomes hot outside, the animals start seeking shelter during the day and they become more active at night. Well then as fall approaches we start having cool nights again and we're back into these warm days, cool nights. The animals switch gears again and become more active during the daylight and start bunkering down during cool weather at night. And then during the winter time you're going to have activity on those sporadic days where you have warmth for reptiles and then um, you know, there are certain amphibians that are active predominantly at night. So really the, the season that you're in also affects when the best time to go herping is. Alright guys in this video we've just begun to scratch the surface by taking a look at when the best time to go herping is and I'd love to hear in the comments some of your tips, tricks, or even discussion topics about when the best time for you to go herping is. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Also, please feel free to give this a like and share it with some of your herping friends because I'd love to build a community here where we can help each other grow and really support each other. Be sure to join us next week when we look at herping etiquette. So every Tuesday we're going to be looking at herp tips, tricks, and topics that will help you become better herpers and help us grow as a community together. Guys, be kind to one another, be kind to the environment, always catch and release, and until next time, happy herping.